Okay. Hello and welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade, Executive Director of the Brain and Body Foundation. Now remember, Your Health in Your Hands is Africa's number one, numero uno health TV show. Uh, we were judged so by our peers and by a long laborious process of selection and vetting and checking and looking at all the different programs and they said that we were the best. I hope that's how it went, but I believe it, it was. <laughs> so welcome. Um, and I think it's because our goal is, is very well, laser focused on helping Nigerians and Africans understand the practical principles that help to guide health, things that they can take home and act upon. Because I mean, let's, let's face it. A lot of people talk about health and, oh, yeah, just exercise and eat good food, uh, have a nice diet, sleep well. Those are just general ideas, general tips. And people think that when they've heard it so many times that they're actually doing them. And, and you and I know that they're not really doing them. But if you can have a specific thing to hold on to that you can go and apply with you, your spouse, your family, and you can apply and you can see results, that makes a difference. That makes a huge difference. And a lot of you have written to us, a lot of you have, have called us to thank us for helping you change and improve your health. And that is what we are here for. So please keep those calls coming in, the texts coming in, the emails coming in, so that we can continue to help you. And as always, our Friday clinics are open. They're free Friday clinics. We have been mandated, authorized, and deputized by the federal government of Nigeria to address a whole range of conditions, including brain disorders, sickle cell disease, autism, and we're doing it free of charge. Believe it or not, we've been doing this now for about five, six years. You come to our Friday clinics, no questions asked, you get whatever we can give you that will help. And as you have seen on our website, we have lots and lots and lots of testimonials. Sickle cell disease, obviously, is number one because Nigeria is number one in the world. And we have to get a handle of that or on that, excuse me. Now, with that said, sickle cell disease is also a cardiovascular issue. We always think about it as just a blood disorder, but it's also a cut, it affects the heart and the blood vessels. And because the heart and blood vessels are the number one cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the world, it's so important that we also address cardiovascular disease. So if you are on the show last week, we're having her back on today, and we will be introducing her, for those who have not met her before, we'll be introducing her shortly after the break. So stay tuned, call your friends and family, and be back on in a few minutes. All right. You should clap now. Ah, oh, they clap for me. This is just the thing that said. This is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so ah, go easy now. Yeah, ah. guys, no. Okay, thank you, my brother. Better person. Go easy now. Yeah. Easy to do this thing from afar. Ah. I mean, I mean, all my people can do this thing consistent from afar like that. Okay. But he wasn't taught in medical school. Yeah. What? He did not teach this one in medical school. They didn't, they, did teach not teach you. they didn't teach us. So we had to learn the hard way, my sister. The hard way. Okay. I see that I'm going to start you. Why is your phone talking again? Okay, I'm ready. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Welcome back, folks. Uh, with me on the show is Dr. Moni Adani Do, who is the Chief Medical Director and Co-Founder of Naveen Healthcare, based in Lagos. Uh, thank you. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> thank you for having me back. Well, I, we appreciate you making the time. We had a lot of fun last time, and thank you for all that great information you shared. We're going to get in more now, uh, and I think during the break, we talked about about um, um, dental health. Um, I, a few weeks ago, we had Dr. Dior, my namesake, my former classmate, talk about the importance of 
gum disease to <laughs> cardiovascular disease, amongst other things. And he's mentioned a few highlighting things. It's now said that doctors and dentists should work together, or excuse me, cardiologists and dentists should work, should work together because there are so much cross intersection. And if, if one does, I, I mean, it's, it's this symbol, this collaboration that needs to be done. Why, do, why is that important? Okay, so it's really interesting to note that, you know, people that have chronic gum disease mm -hmm. can actually get heart disease as well. Mm. As well as people that have gum or tooth infections. Now, how does it work? Now, when you have chronic gum, gum disease, okay, you have inflammation in your body. And when you have inflammation in your body, your body reacts to inflammation in the same way, whether it's in the mouth or it's in the gut or wherever. And it also causes inflammation in the lining of your, you know, of your blood vessels. Now, this mm. inflammation can cause narrowing of the blood vessels. It can cause atherosclerosis. Blood clots can form. You can get a stroke mm. just because your teeth are not healthy. Another thing that can happen is when you have a gum infection or a tooth infection and you have a defective heart valve or there's some defects in your heart, now mm -hmm. that infection can enter your blood and then go and infect your heart. And you get something called endocarditis, which can be life-threatening. Mm. Okay, so it's really important that we get our teeth checked. And it's also interesting to note that many people who are diabetic were first diagnosed in the dental chair. So you come, you have this horrible dental abscess and all that, and they take your sugar, boom, it's 300, it's 200, it's high. You know, So many have been referred to an endocrinologist or to a cardiologist from the dental chair. So yes, we actually do need to work together. Honestly, I tell people, the body shouldn't be divided into specialties. <laughs> everything affects everything. Yeah. So sometimes you know, it's difficult when you work in silos, you know, it's one patient, but is doing her thing. The ophthalmologist is doing his thing. The ear, nose and throat doctor is doing their thing. The, cardi the cardiologist is somewhere else doing something else. And not knowing that it's one underlying problem that is causing all these issues. So we really mm. need to work together, you know, as healthcare professionals. Yeah, that was an extra. Well, good luck there. You know, as you all know, we, we, we like to work exactly that in silos. So, we, <laughs> so that's why it's so important that the patients or the individual be aware of these things. So that's, <laughs> if, I mean, so, I've made you made understand now if you are if you're brushing your teeth and your gum is bleeding or if you are flossing and your gum is bleeding bleeding that's a sign of of what gum disease yeah. Yeah. but also it's a sign that you may be you may be compromised cardiovascularly right yeah so so you need to get that checked out right right so it's, it's very important you do do that and especially if you're having trouble uh, maybe you're taking blood sugar medication, or you're taking uh, hypertension medication, and it's not controlling it. Doctor keeps on having to pile on on the pills. It may be that something is compromising the ability of those drugs to work properly, and therefore, yeah, I mean, so if you now think about your teeth and all that, and that, that that may be part of the problem that people need to look at. So people need to really understand this. Of course, as you mentioned in the last program, in the last show last week, that if you're having um, belly fat, a lot of belly fat, it may make the, sh the drugs not work as well. So, or if you're sitting for too long, and I think we want to talk about that. Let's talk about that, by the way. Let's talk about sitting. Well, sit, sitting for too long, and we'll, kind of, we'll circle back to dentition. Okay. Okay, so it's really interesting because our bodies were not made to stay in one place. Now, our ancestors were hunter-gatherers. They used to wake up in the morning, go to the bush, shoot animals, go and farm and things like that. Now with modernization, we've become rich, you know, we've become a bit more modern. We don't walk mm -hmm. about anymore. All we do is sit in one place. So the typical life of a typical person, he or she wakes up in the morning, drives to work, gets to work, takes the elevator, you know, to their office. They stay on their chair all day. You know, even they have lunch at their desk and then they close in the evening. Sometimes they go for happy hour they're still seated and then they drive home and they get home, they're so tired. All they do is watch their favorite TV show, watch football, eat dinner and go and sleep. So this person has been sitting 
all day. And even now with, you know, with the pandemic and everybody's working from home, people don't even leave their houses anymore. So people work from their beds, literally, because all they do is go to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, and they're back on their desk. So now studies have shown that if the longer you sit, the more at risk you are of having heart disease. Now, an interesting thing is people think, oh, when you do your 45 minutes exercise in the morning, that should be enough. That's not correct. Because mm. your 45 minutes walk in the morning does not protect you 100% from heart disease. Mm. So if you walk in the 24 hour day, you only walk for, for 45 minutes. So the rest of your 23 hours and 15 minutes, you're sitting down, you're still at risk of heart disease. So mm. how do you do this? So we're advised that every two hours, you get up and walk around for at least 10 minutes. Then you go back to your mm. seats. So how can you do this? You can, you can take meetings standing up. You can buy a standing desk. If you work from home, you can buy a standing desk. If you're, if you're, if you're having Zoom meetings, for example, you can actually stand and have your meetings. You don't have to sit down. Mm. Um, you can park far in the parking lot such that you have to walk a distance you know to your to the office take the stairs not the elevator you know if you want to go and get something from your colleague in the other room don't don't send an email actually walk you know to your colleague's office and have a conversation with him just keep moving as much as you can just don't sit down all day you know that could be supposed to having cardiovascular disease. That is so interesting. Is it because of the positioning? I mean, would the same effect be seen if you were, let's say, lying down or on a lounge chair? Or is it because of the way the, the office chairs are angled that makes them so dangerous? Or is it just not being sedentary at all? It's because it's because you're being sedentary. It's because you're not moving your body. Okay, it's I mean, it's so being sedentary. Okay, yeah. because you're not moving yeah. your body. Yeah, it's because, it's because you're, so whether you're lying down, sitting down, you know, reclining, sitting erect, as long as you're not moving around, then you're at risk of developing heart disease. That is crazy. That is crazy. I, I mean, I've been told too that it's like when the, the blood begins to pool around your when you sit down for so long, around that hip, this pelvis area, the body begins to pull and then sets up some chain, metabolic chain reactions that's, that change the consistency of the blood or raise inflammatory cytokines or... And you even have away. problems, because if you sit in one place, you know, your blood is not circulating properly, the blood pools around your legs, you start having leg swelling, joint problems, back issues. There's so many problems with when you sit in one place. Your heart right. doesn't really pump properly. The heart also needs to be exercised. You know, when you don't stress your heart, quote unquote, it's always like, okay, so now we're beating. I don't really yeah. have to do much, you know, and it goes out of shape, you know, but when you walk around, you know, your heart beats faster. And then when you walk around your body, you know, releases all kinds of hormones that dilate your arteries, nitric oxide and things like that. That helps reduce your blood pressure. You know, that helps dilate your vessels, improves circulation, improves blood supply to all your organs. So, you know, you just can't spend your whole day sitting down. At least most of the time, please try and walk around. So in other words, throw the remote control away. I start moving around. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that helps. And then most of us wear these fancy smartwatches. And yeah. we're just wearing it because X, X also got one. So people are walking yeah. around with devices on them that can do so much. A lot of these devices can count your steps, take your pulse, take your BP, check your oxygen levels. And these devices can tell you, stand up, you know, you, you've been sitting for too long, you know, take a walk. And then it shows you, you know, your steps. It shows you, you know, how many, how, how far you've walked. You need to complete your steps. You need to do this and that. So. Guys, instead of you know spending a lot of money on these gadgets, I know you use their functions. Just today, just have a look at your smartphone, your, your smartwatch, and look at what it can do and how it can improve your health. It's not just for fashion, you know, or trying Fantastic. to oppress 
we will care from from accounting you know i, I now have a new watch <laughs> <Can you take? laughs> fantastic that's a very very good point you use your technology to your advantage but i also like the and that's scary the, the fact that you can exercise every day and still be at risk of heart disease because you sit down for, for a long period of time that so you're saying that that does not uh, reverse or neutralize the, the damage that is caused by sitting down for too much 45 minutes a day of exercise that's almost that's, hard, that's almost impossible to believe almost it's crazy the research is out there the research is out there <laughs> Very important point. Thank you for, for, for bringing it up. We're going to take a short break now and then we will be back shortly. Yeah, awesome. But vitamin D is very important though. You have to, the fact that people are, sub, are, are, supplement, uh, are, are, are abusing uh, supplements does not mean that, they should, that supplements are not important to no, 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 no. So all my patients are on vitamin D, they're on vitamin B. Many oh, are also on vitamin C. But you so know, I, I I do that with a stern kidney that you know you cannot stop your medication. You know, if okay. you have to stop your drugs, let me be the one to stop it. Fact, because, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, because I'm also on vitamin D, I'm on vitamin C, I'm on vitamin B, I'm using all kinds of things as I'm well. How much vitamin D are you? But because I know, pardon? How much vitamin D are you taking? How much vitamin D? How much vitamin D are you taking? I think it's 1,000 IU or something like that. It's not enough. It's not enough. I should I use 10,000. Where did you hear that? I just bought it off the store. It wasn't it wasn't prescribed. I just bought it, bought it off the shelf. OK, what yeah, about the vitamin D and I went to my eye. You, you need at least, you, you need at least 10,000 10, a day. Why? Is it because I'm middle-aged? I have been discriminatory here. <laughs> My dear, no. No, the, the research is out. I mean, they still recommend 800 or 600, which is absolute nonsense. Think about this. If you stay out by the beach, let's say a white person, because the studies have been done in white people, because they, they absorb and they make vitamin D much more readily. In fact, we have to spend six times the amount of time that white people do. If a white person stays in the, in the sun, they can make as much as 25, and in such, some, in some cases, 35,000 international units from being out in the sun. So let me ask you this. If your body will make that amount of vitamin D, how can 10,000, for instance, be toxic for you? I see. But in Nigeria, we're always in the sun. Well, I, I, I get it's that. A lie. You know. It's a lie. You're not always in the sun, especially uh, middle, middle income people. And above, you know, it's in the sun. And even if you're in the sun, you're fully clad. You're well, fully clad. So, mm -hmm. so you're not getting vitamin D even if you're in the sun. It's only are those farmers. It's only those farmers who are who are. I who are, are you here? Yeah, go and swallow the vitamin D. In fact, we we have to buy ten thousand. Ten thousand. Oh, well, I mean, I think you can get five thousand. Five thousand is more common than ten thousand. So you just take two, at least two a day. May I take a, like, I think like twenty, twenty-five thousand a day. Especially because I'm traveling and COVID nineteen is everywhere here. So I take, I take a lot. That's a lot of vitamin D. Are you checking your calcium levels? Check your calcium levels. Lie, lie. It's not, it's not, not going to affect things. No, I'm telling you. It's not. Okay. Just, just at at 20,000, 20, you're safe. I, I, I promise you. In fact, the Mayo Clinic says that it's, um, you would have to be taking 60,000 daily for several months before you get toxic levels. Mayo Clinic no, office. That's the no, after, no, no. after this, go to, after this go, to a, go to Mayo Clinic site and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because I have a whole, a whole tub of 1,000. I can my 10 tablets. Because I don't know. Imagine, you know, it just, just, money. just put, it costs you know, a lot of money. Because it's now, it's, 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 how much is it now? It's like 5,000 per month now, 5,000, 10,000 naira per month. You know, I spend naira, I don't spend USD. I you know and how, how much naira is. So, and that's what I'm saying, it's 5,000 naira. Now. It's like 5,000 naira now, could you do 5,000 naira for, 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 for a month supply? Eh, 5,000 naira for one medicine. 
and I'm taking evening primrose. I'm taking um, vitamin C, 1,000. I'm taking vitamin B. I'm taking, we are taking zinc, 100 milligrams. Okay, you have to be coming down. Oh, yeah, let, let, let's get on with it. <laughs> yeah, what's <All> right. next? <laughs> uh, supplements, don't allow. We talk about some supplements. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, but, but that's your forte, Charlotte. But I'll, I'll just give my opinion about how people shouldn't, um, people shouldn't Substitute first of all. Substitute for that. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that's really important. And then, just, then tell your story. Too. I think that's really important. And tell your story. And they should do it. They should do it under 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 a doctor's guidance. They can't just be swallowing supplements because somebody said, you know, monks in Japan used it and they became young again after two weeks or something. There are always some weird stories about some people in the mountains of of Mongolia or something that swallowed one one thing one thing. Anyway, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Well. All right, folks, welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Munisola Adani Jo, powerful name of the Naveen Healthcare, of, excuse me, Naveen Healthcare. She is the co-founder and chief medical director. Doc, let's talk about supplementation. Of course, you know, I'm pretty big on supplements. That's all we use in our foundation. We don't use medication at all. We use supplements and of course, uh, we know that supplements uh, have a key role where cardiovascular health is concerned. However, one should not be substituted for the other. They're meant to be, as, you, as the word is, supplements. Let's talk about how the two can work together to optimize health among patients. Okay, so um, the problem we have in Nigeria is that you know, people tend to think supplements are the medication. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. you see people that get gifts from the diaspora, you know, there's there are always these huge jars of whatever vitamins and mm -hmm. you know, everything is labeled good for the heart. Now, once mm -hmm. people see something is good for the heart, mm -hmm. they start to take that and they abandon every other thing. They abandon their lifestyle modification, they abandon their medication mm -hmm. and start swallowing that. Yes, it's good for the heart, you know, all the supplements, there's some that are actually good for omega-3 and all that, CoQ10 and all that. They're good for the heart. However, exactly as the name says, they're supplementation, they're like an adjunct. So you still have to eat healthy. You still have to reduce your salt. You still have to watch your sugar. You still have to take your medication. Now, it's always good to use supplements with your doctor's guidance and advice. Because sometimes with this supplement, if I use it more than one, they like, like I was telling you earlier, somebody's using four different vitamins. And if you look at the components, you know, everything has the same thing. So the same, you know, using the same vitamin A, vitamin D, and using all the supplements at the same time, because that could be too much. I was telling you as well about my patients who, who when I saw her, her BP was quite high, you know, 170 something. She was a middle-aged lady and she was obese. So we started her on medication. Her baby was really high, so she was on, I think she was on three drugs. So mm -hmm. we started her on lifestyle, salt, and all that. Then we realized that I think she had low, I think low magnesium. Anyway, she had some mineral issues. So we started supplementing those as well. Now, what happened as we were treating her, her BP started really dropping. So I started tailing down her medication because I realized that, you know, her BP was as low as 98 over 60 at some point, I had to take off one. So I think as at the last time I saw her, we had moved from three drugs to just one. I think she had lost like 20 kilograms. You know, she was exercising every day. She was taking her low, it was, she was on low salt diet and things like that. And she was also, you know, taking this really good supplement. I can't remember the supplement she was taking, but you know, she was doing everything under supervision. So you can't just go to, it, to, to someone and say, oh, this drug is good for your heart. I and mean, the person says, okay, it's good for my heart. Then they start swallowing it without, you know, supplement, without um, supervision. So that's always my problem with supplementing Nigerians. It's not that, you know, I don't prescribe them. It's not that I don't like them, but we, we need to be careful. We need to be careful and we need to use them under supervision. 
And that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. People should not substitute, should not think that yeah, vitamin D or omega-3 alone is going to do the problem. And I, we, we, I mean, some of us, we, we wish we wish were possible for supplements to, 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 to fix it, all, all the problems, but uh, we know better. Uh, and folks, you need to understand it too. If, yet, if you've been diagnosed with hypertension or diabetes, yes, you can try um, omega-3, you can try vitamin D, but don't think that is solving the problem without, you have to check your blood pressure. Like as Dr. Munia said, you have to go to the pharmacy or wherever it is, get, get your blood pressure checked. If it's not working, it means it's not working. You can't take chances. You've got to get to the doctor and get instituted on a program. And then you take your supplements along with it. And as you know, and we've been saying this for the past four or five years, vitamin D is super important for the cardiovascular system. So is vitamin C. Those two, and of course, um, um, vitamin B as well. And what yeah. we have seen, what we have seen, because the government again has given us approval, mandated us, in other words, deputized and author authorized us, I like to say that, to um, also address heart disease as well. Not as a treatment, but to teach about what can improve your cardiovascular health. Drugs will control your blood pressure. Drugs can also tr control your blood sugar and your triglycerides and your I was the other one, the other one again, um, cholesterol levels. Oh, yeah. That's all that is very important. By the way, we, we need, I need to talk about homocysteine briefly as well. Uh, and all that, and those control those things, but you also, drugs will not make your blood vessels healthy. Mm -hmm. It's your, it's a good diet, supplement with good supplementation that will make them healthy. But drugs can bring down those levels of their thing. And that's why you have to, that have, they have to work together. Our patients, significantly shown that once they use their drugs and their blood pressure and all those parameters are controlled, plus they add things like vitamin D and vitamin C, they get even better results. And sometimes they even, they even lower the amount of drugs they have to take because they are getting healthier, their blood vessels are getting healthier. And I think it's very important that you point this, these things out, that one should not be substituted for the other. Don't be in denial and don't, don't be... Uh, deceived let's put it that way because we i know like you said like you said people are on the streets they are selling this they're selling that and everybody's like this is going to solve all ills and then you're deceived into taking it and then forgetting about your medication you put your medication aside and then all of a sudden you come down with a stroke or a heart attack because that supplement or that whatever concussion did not work so great great point let's talk about um homocysteine okay so hyperhomocysteine that's a huge word i'll say slowly Hyperhomocysteinemia <laughs> means too there much. Yeah, it means too much homocysteine in your blood, and that can actually predispose to heart disease as well. It can predispose to strokes, mm -hmm. and vitamin B helps to break down homocysteine. So B12? that is why. Isn't it B twelve or is it just? I can't, it I can't remember which one. Is it B twelve or folate? I can't really remember. Um, I I really need to check. Well, that. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's one of the two. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's B twelve. I can't remember, but vitamin, but if you're taking your, your B complex, everything is there. So that's fine. That's why I'm taking B complex, by the way, to break down homocysteine, you know. Fantastic. You know, fantastic. And I think it breaks it down to form melatonin, which helps you sleep better at night. Am I correct? I, you, 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 you're, correct. The one who, you're the one who was paying attention in medical school. I mean, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> So, so anyway, hyperhomocysteinemia is not good for your cardiovascular system. So when you take vitamin B, it breaks down homocysteine and it also protects your heart. So, yeah. So that's, that's something that we don't really hear about. I certainly didn't hear about in medical school. Um, how did this become a, a thing? How did homocysteine become a thing? And uh, what's, just tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, it's classified under the new risk factors for heart disease. It's called one of the novel risk factors of heart disease. It comes under, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's been talked about with chronic inflammation, H. pylori um, infection, chronic chlamydia infection, and things like that. Wow. You know, so, so, yeah. Chlamydia, H. pylori infection can be exposed to having heart disease because it's, it's chronic infection and chronic inflammation, just like the gum disease we talked about. So anything right. that causes inflammation in your body can expose you to heart disease. So what makes homocysteine levels rise? You mentioned vitamin D, vitamin D deficiency. Are there any foods or 
any lifestyles that make vitamin and homocysteine levels right? Well, basically, when you, well, I, I'm not really sure about that, but I know that definitely, you know, when you're not eating properly, all these things happen to you. You know, when you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of dairy, a lot of processed foods, you know, you, a lot of your hormones go out of whack. So, and taking your vegetables, taking your supplements, all that can control that. So, Okay, so to talk about, let's talk about salts and apparently with, Af with we black people, let me say Africa as well, we black people, we tend not to, I mean, this is what we're taught, so we tend not to be able to handle salt as well as only boys do. So tell us about that. Okay, so we have what is called um, salt dependent hypertension, meaning that we hold on to salt. We don't excrete salt well as black people. And mm -hmm. so that's why many times when we reduce salt levels, our BP goes down. And when mm -hmm. we take drugs that help us eliminate salt, called diuretics, you know, it helps us you know, reduce our blood pressure as well. Because anywhere mm -hmm. salt goes, water follows. Mm -hmm. And when you have a lot of salt and water in your system, then your blood pressure goes up. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why for Black people, most especially, we're told to restrict salt in our diet so that you know, the BP can be better controlled. Okay, very important. So basically, don't add more uh, more salt to your your meals. I mean, I don't know how you can live without salt, but that's an important thing. But I think <laughs> on those condiments too, we kind of like forget about yeah. the condiment salt levels and things like maggi and nor and, exactly. and those other things yeah. that can but that increase the salt level. So people have to be aware of that. Um, sugar too, um, the hidden sugar. Um, what people don't realize as much is that things like pounded yam, eba, not, but not gary for interestingly enough, but eba and all these other, um, what do you call it, solids, they may not be sweet in this sugary sense of the word, but once they're taken into the body, the body very quickly converts them into sugar and therefore raises the blood sugar levels yeah. and therefore raises insulin levels and it's, it's a constant battle with your pancreas trying to bring your blood sugar levels down for the next meal, you take another meal of that Especially pounded yam. Especially, why, why Especially you have, pounded yam. Why do you have to pick on pounded yam? I am only no, because, because hold on now. When you boil yam, right, and it is the boiled state, it still has the fiber in it, right? So when you go ahead and pound it, you've broken down all the fiber. So it's like partly digested. When you now eat pounded yam, because it's partly digested, it converts to sugar really quickly and it shoots your blood sugar up. So you're saying cooked yam will not have the same effect? As pounded, no. Mm. It doesn't. Interesting, because it, it okay. interesting, interesting. <sighs> I gotta tell you, it's, I mean, I, it's a hard pill to take. It's a hard pill to take for us, like, to people. Uh, to tell us not to take part of the arm, but I hear what you're saying. Maybe, you, maybe what we can do is uh, and it's compromises to reduce your portion, maybe. Instead of exactly, that, reduce your portion. Exactly. Reduce the portions it. and reduce the frequency. So don't take it three times a day, especially okay. if you're diabetic. Please, thank you. Yes. So you can take part of the arm maybe every Sunday so that you remember your roots. A small quantity, <laughs> not that you yeah, take it three times every a day. Sunday, every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, one more thing because I just wrote this note here. I wanted to bring it out. Vitamin K two. I want to emphasize that we, we now know that K two. We've heard about K one, which is for clotting, but vitamin K two, which goes with vitamin D three. What K two does that is that it takes away calcium from the blood and put and from the tissues where, where, where it many times is deposited, and it extracts that and puts it into the bones where it should be. So um, I always recommend that if people are taking a lot of vitamin D3, they should, should take K2 as well, because D3 removes, um, uh, helps you absorb calcium and put it in the bloodstream. K2 takes the calcium from the bloodstream and pushes it into the bones. So people who are suffering from osteoporosis, although that's not as common in black women as it is in white women, especially, um, K2 and D3 and uh, magnesium could significantly help in that case if you're taking the right amount so it's, it's another another very important point we found that k2 also helps with mm -hmm. atherosclerosis as well but never without 
the medication, you, know, you need to start with the medication and then add the supplementation to it. Did I, did I get that right? Yes, sir. Thank you, Ma. I appreciate it. All right, final <laughs> words. <laughs> All right, final words. Um, final words. We need to take care of our hearts, okay? We need to, we can't keep living in, I say this all the time, we can't keep living in denial of heart disease. Yeah. It's still the number one killer of everyone worldwide, men and women. And 80% yeah. of cardiovascular deaths can be prevented by mm -hmm. you know, early detection, early treatment, lifestyle changes. And so mm -hmm. it is really, really important that we pay our attention to our heart health. Don't wait until your heart, and, and then heart disease doesn't give you any kind of warning many times. For many people, the first symptom may be your first heart attack and you die. The first symptom may be the stroke you have in your sleep and then you don't wake up. The first mm -hmm. symptom could be when you're giving a talk. We've had so many you know, instances of people having meetings and they you know, fall over, collapse and die. People have wow. been dancing at parties, fall over, collapse and die. People have been, you know, so it's really important to know your cardiovascular status, know your numbers, you know, not your house address, not your phone number, your vital numbers for life, your BMI, body mass index, of course, your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your blood cholesterol, okay? And the numbers should be at least six months old. So in other words, they should check out this. Everybody should be check, checking on us every six months at least. Okay. At least your blood pressure, because blood pressure is the easiest to check, and your BMI is the easiest to check. You know, so your yeah. blood sugar and your cholesterol may be every year, but your blood pressure, you can walk into any place and get your blood pressure done. Right, very true. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Adani. Uh, really appreciate it and wish you all the very best in your your work to improve healthcare and health among Nigerians. And I know you're, you're doing a lot of stuff in different parts of the country, like Agwai Bomb and the East and all, all that. So really, really appreciate it. We hope we can stay in touch so that you can, you can continue to share your wisdom with our fellow Nigerians. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be nice. Awesome. Well, folks, thank you again for joining us. You remember, this is where to get the best information when it comes to healthcare. We are number one in the world, in, in Africa. I like to say that a lot. I think, we, I think we work for it. So thank you for your support through the years. And uh, see you next week. God bless and bye. <laughs>